Hello everyone. I want to do something a little bit different in this lecture. You know, most of my lectures are longer for my students who need to learn a lot of information uh, for my courses, but I thought I would create some shorter lectures and, you know, ones that I sometimes interweave in my longer lectures that might people might find interesting when they don't have time to sit through a whole one. And one of my favorite topics, of course, is World War II. And I've often loved hearing from World War II veterans and their stories and what they've gone through. Uh, and it's just very powerful. I've, I've spoken to a lot of World War II Holocaust survivors. That's, of course, a whole other uh, interesting topic that's so important. But one of the other stories is just from people who lived in the United States and the home front. And I have a neighbor, a lady named Alice Perea. Uh, who was born June 1st, 1926, and I've known her for many years now, and I've had many conversations with her about what it was like being you know, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old during the World War II period. And she shared with me some remarkable stories that, you know, as a historian, I've been able to kind of work into my lectures that I think students and just average people just really enjoy learning about. Uh, so first of all, let me just show you a picture of her so you can put a face to the story I'm going to tell you. Here's Alice from about, oh, I would say about seven, eight years ago. Um, and probably one of the most remarkable stories I'd like to share with you is what she told me about things that happened regarding her, her life and her period right after Pearl Harbor was attacked. So December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor, right? Most people know that date. And this is, of course, a, a very powerful photo of the Pearl Harbor uh, being attacked. And one of the stories she told me is that, you know, she was high school at the time. She was about 16 years old. That a few days after the Pearl Harbor attack, there was an assembly at her school, at her high school. And they called all the students together and they told them what was going on. And then she said to me, David, you know what a lot of the boys did? Remember, this is high school. So a lot of these are 16, 17 year old boys. Some of them aren't even 18 years old. She said after the assembly, a lot of the boys just got up and left. And she said, you know where they went? And they said they went to the recruiting offices to join up to join to fight the war. And very often, you know, the, the recruiters didn't ask, you know, are you 18? You know, or they would ask, are you 18? But they wouldn't show any papers. Are you 18? Yeah, okay, good. You know, welcome, welcome to the war. And this is just a remarkable description of what an average 17, 16, 17 year old would do at that time. Um, you know, th th that's one story. She also told me that in her graduating class, when she finally graduated high school, there were only two boys because everybody else, all the 18 year old boys would be graduating high school were already in the war or had volunteered. So th that, that's a thing amazing. Um, the other story that she shares with me that I, that I like to talk about, and she actually offered to give me something which I've been using for years in my classes, is these World War II ration books. And so I want to show you these because these are just remarkable, especially if you consider this is all on the heels of the Great Depression. So these are World War II ration books. And what would happen during the war, because so much of the efforts were made to fight the war, people at home in the home front had to make a lot of sacrifices. And so every family and every member of every family was given these ration books. And this is kind of the what you're seeing here is the image of the original case and the actual book that her family members had passed on to her. And she just said, David, do you want these one day? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'd love to use these in my lectures. And so, you know, what you're looking at is the outside. When you flip them over, open them and you flip them open, this is what you see. You see these stamps, right? And these stamps would be used to buy things. Now, you would go to a store. And when you would go to a store, you can't just pay money. You also had to give ration book stamps. And you can only buy so much of certain things. And so you have, for example, green and blue stamps. You can kind of see up here on the top. And those would be used for things like juice and baby food and other day-to-day -day food items. Uh, the reds you see down here would often be used for meats. Uh, black stamps were often used for spares in case there were adjustments being made to, to whatever was required. And so you can't just go to a store and buy something. You actually had to buy a limited amount of something. Um, and so, and this went on for a long time, right? I think the books she shared with me were from 1943. Uh, but this was something that people during the World War II generation did. And it just really shows you what they went through on the home front. So this is just one short story, right? If you really want to learn a lot more about World War II, 
Uh, obviously, I have all my big lectures and my long lectures on my on my YouTube page. You could subscribe and watch them all. Uh, and so I cover a whole bunch of different topics. So I thought, you know, I would try some of these shorter lectures that I'm hoping people would kind of gravitate to and enjoy if you don't have time to sit through a whole lecture, but maybe you want to learn something small, uh, but still very interesting. And, I, you know, for anybody watching this, you know, I always tell people that generation of World War II, whether it's veterans or people at home, that generation's almost gone. And so it's great if you have a chance to talk to them and tell their stories. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this particular YouTube lecture, this short one, is, you know, it's kind of, it's putting the story of Alice down, you know, for, for people to hear in the future. Uh, and I think that's really important. Any way we can document it is great, uh, whether it's, again, people from the war or from people from the home. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that's it. Have a great day.